one big thing. I had intended to write something about the U.S. men's national team that would live in this space, but it makes far more sense to welcome Taylor Twellman to this space. You were brilliant, I thought, last night with raw, honest I analysis. didn't prepare it. And that's why it was so good, yep. because it was from the heart, and I understand why it was. With 24 hours to let this settle, do you feel differently about anything after this stunning turn of events that leaves the U.S. men's national team out of the World Cup? I feel worse. Why? I feel worse. Uh, because the more I think about the circumstances and how far we've come from the 1986 era where we didn't qualify the last time for the World Cup till now, the amount of money and the resources, Scott, that the United States have put into player development mm -hmm. and qualifying for the World Cup, unequivocally, this cannot happen and should never happen. And then I'm left with, well, wait a minute, what are the answers? Because we all thought, everyone in the U.S. soccer world, Hiring Jurgen Klinsmann was bridging the gap between Belgium, Colombia, Brazil, and Argentina, when now you can't even get a result against Trinidad. Right. It just feels like a massive step sideways, if not backwards. And I, I, I choose my words carefully here because you, I, I understand you know, what this means to you. You're wearing the uniform, and I get it all. Are we just not that good at soccer? I think it's a legitimate question, a legitimate question. And part of that, Scott, and you ask it, with the American arrogance that we have with all the other sports. We have the best leagues in the world in this country. Mm -hmm. It's the exact opposite, right? So, and, and we don't dominate in the sport of soccer. We dominate in every other sport. And yet we look at it and we have an arrogance as if we know what the answer is. My struggle is, why do we have arrogance? And I'm not saying everyone that comes over with an accent has the answers either. Right. We do have experience in this. But Scott, we have an arrogance in this sport where I'm like, well, our best option is qualifying for the World Cup and throwing the balls in the air saying, hopefully we get to the semifinals. The arrogance isn't rooted in accomplishment. That's where, that's where you lose me because if, if you're a World Cup contender, and the United States is not, I made this analogy and I made it with you before we started, that they're, they're, they're like George Washington in the it's NCAA basketball tournament. Good enough to make it, good enough to be excited about making it and think, hey, can, can we win a couple games and make the Sweet 16? Yes, and they've done that but have never won an NCAA title. The, the, world, the United States never won the World Cup. So where does this arrogance come from is, where, is what, what I wonder. But absent the answer to that, the more pressing question is how do you ensure organizationally that what happened last night is not repeated ever again? That's a good question. I think the bigger question is how does George Washington become North Carolina or Kansas or what, Kentucky? Give me that answer. And I don't know that answer because that's the more concerning thing. The arrogance comes from we have more resources than arguably any country in the world mm -hmm. regarding this sport. Yet Iceland, a population of 329,000. Corpus Christi bit last night was where you, you were just went off the deep end. Which, by the way, though, think about that. If Corpus I Christi have. can qualify for the World Cup, what are we doing with 320 million people? I don't to know. answer your question, I think we have to realize that our culture right now, it cannot be, we can't do soccer the American way. I said this earlier, and Scott, I think you'll appreciate it. We, we treat sports in America, we reward mediocrity. The New York Giants are 0-5, and you're going to go on a tangent over the next months. Does Eli Manning stay? But they get the number one draft pick. How do they retool? In our sport, it's the exact opposite. If you lose, you're gone. You're relegated. You lose jobs. The town loses jobs. You don't get rewarded for mediocrity. The Lakers get the number one pick. Wait a minute. That doesn't happen in our sport. There's got to be more pressure. These players, coaches, general managers, everyone, Scott, there has to be accountability. We do not have enough accountability. Sunil Galati and Bruce Arena, after that game, want to look in the camera and tell me no changes should be made, no drastic changes. That's the definition of insanity for me. The same thing over and over, expecting a different result, I don't get it. That's why I'm lost. I am too, and, and I, I'm not going to keep asking questions to which there aren't answers. I guess I just a, a, a sort of a closing thought is just – that what happened last night, is it possible that it truly is a moment of reckoning and it is the rock bottom from which there's a bounce back? Do you, do you in your heart, believe that? Not hope it, but believe it. Oh, man. In my heart, I believe it. Uh, my brain tells me I'm not sure it's going to happen.